All right, let's talk about something that holds our world together. Literally, it's called spot welding. You might not see it, you might not even know its name, but trust me, it's everywhere. It's a way to stick two pieces of metal together, not with glue, not with tape. We use heat and pressure. Think of it like a super strong, super fast metal hug. This hug makes the metal melt a tiny bit, then it cools down. And just like that, the two pieces are one. It's a tough job, but someone or something has to do it, and it does it well. Spot welding is a type of resistance welding. That's a fancy way of saying we use electricity. The metal resists the electricity. This resistance makes heat, lots of heat, right where we want it. It's like rubbing your hands together fast on a cold day. They get warm, right? Same idea, but with metal and a whole lot more power. This method is super important in making things, things you use every single day. Without it, a lot of stuff would just fall apart. It's a real workhorse in the world of metalwork, even if it doesn't get all the applause. Now let's get up close and personal with the star of the show, the spot welder machine. These things can be big, or they can be small enough to hold in your hand. But they all do the same basic job. They deliver that heat and pressure we talked about. Most spot welders have two arms. These arms reach out like a giant pair of metal tweezers. At the end of each arm is a copper tip. These tips are called electrodes. Copper is great because it lets electricity flow easily, and it can handle the heat. These electrodes are super important. The machine needs power, lots of it, so it's hooked up to an electrical source. Inside the machine, there's a big transformer. This transformer takes regular electricity and changes it. It makes it into the kind of power needed for welding, high current, low voltage. That means a lot of electricity, but not pushing too hard. Think of it like a wide river flowing strong, not a narrow, fast jet. This power is what creates the heat when it goes through the metal. The machine also controls how long the power flows. Timing is everything here. These machines are built tough. They have to be. They work hard, often all day long. The frame of the welder is usually made of strong steel. It has to handle the pressure the arms create. Some spot welders are operated by a foot pedal. You press the pedal and the arms clamp down. Others are fully automatic. Robots can do spot welding too. Imagine a robot arm moving super fast, making hundreds of welds. That's how cars get put together so quickly. It's a marvel of engineering, really. Simple in idea, but complex in execution. The electrodes, those copper tips, do the real dirty work. They press the metal sheets together. Then the electricity flows through them and into the metal. Because they are copper, they don't melt easily, but they do wear down over time. So they need to be cleaned or replaced. Keeping these tips in good shape is key to getting good welds. A good spot welder machine, whether big or small, is a powerful tool. It's designed for one purpose, to make strong, reliable spot welds again and again. Okay, so you've got your spot welder, but you can't just walk up and start zapping metal. Oh no, this job, like many good honest jobs, needs safety gear. First things first, your eyes. You need a welding helmet or safety glasses. Even though spot welding doesn't have a super bright continuous arc, there can be sparks. And hot bits of metal can fly. You only get two eyes, protect them. It's not about looking cool, though some helmets do, it's about keeping your sight. This is non-negotiable. Always wear eye protection. Next up, your hands. You'll be handling metal. It might have sharp edges. And after welding, it's going to be hot. So you need good tough gloves. Leather gloves are usually the best choice. They protect from heat, they protect from cuts. They let you grip the metal pieces firmly. Don't use thin garden gloves, they won't cut it. You need real work gloves designed for this kind of job. Think of them as armor for your hands. Your hands are your tools. Keep them safe so you can keep working. Let's not forget the rest of you. Hot sparks can fly further than you think. They can burn your skin. They can set your clothes on fire if you're not careful. So, a leather apron is a smart idea. Or at least wear clothes made of thick natural fibers like cotton. Avoid synthetic stuff like polyester. That stuff can melt onto your skin. Ouch! Long sleeves are good. Closed toe shoes are a must. No sandals in the workshop, folks. It's all about creating a barrier between you and the hot, sharp, and sparky things. And one more thing. Clamps. Sometimes, you need to hold the metal pieces together just right, especially if they are big or awkward. Clamps act like extra hands. They keep everything lined up perfectly before the weld. This ensures the weld is exactly where you want it. A good setup makes for a good weld. So, safety gear and some helpful tools like clamps are essential. They're not fancy. They're not high-tech. But they are absolutely vital to doing the job right. And doing it safely. 
that's always the most important part. You wouldn't paint a dirty wall, would you? Well, you shouldn't try to weld dirty metal either. Preparation is super, super important in spot welding. If your metal sheets are dirty, oily, or rusty, you're asking for trouble. That gunk can get in the way of the electricity. It can make for a weak weld or no weld at all. So the first step before you even think about touching the welder is to clean your metal. This is where the real work often begins. It's not glamorous, but it's crucial. So how do you clean it? You can use a wire brush, either a hand brush or one on a grinder. This will scrub off rust and scale. You can use special cleaners or solvents to get rid of oil and grease. Make sure the metal is dry before you try to weld it. Water and electricity are not good friends. The cleaner the metal, the better the electrical connection. And the better the connection, the better the heat. And the better the heat, the stronger the weld. See, it all links together. Take your time here. Don't rush this part. Once your metal is clean, you need to line it up. The spot weld joins the metal where the electrodes press together. So, you need to make sure that spot is exactly where you want the join to be. Overlap the sheets of metal. The amount of overlap depends on the job. If the pieces aren't lined up right, the weld won't be in the right place. It might be too close to an edge, that makes it weak, or it might miss one of the sheets entirely. That's just a waste of time and energy. Think of it like making a sandwich. You want the good stuff in the middle, right? Same with the metal. You want the two pieces perfectly aligned. So the weld nugget forms right in between them, holding them tight. Use clamps if you need to, especially for bigger pieces, or if you need to make many welds in a row. Good alignment means strong, consistent welds. Bad alignment means headaches. So clean your metal, line it up right. Then, and only then, are you ready for the sparky bit. Preparation truly is king. Section 5. The Big Squeeze and the Bright Flash. The Spot Welding Process Step by Step. Alright, your metal is clean, it's all lined up, you've got your safety gear on. Now for the main event. The actual spot welding, it happens fast, but let's break it down. First, you take your two pieces of metal. You slide them between the copper electrodes of the spot welder. Remember those arms we talked about? The metal goes right between their tips. You position the metal so the spot you want to weld is directly under those tips. This is where the magic is about to happen. Take a moment to get it just right. Next comes the squeeze. You activate the welder, maybe with a foot pedal, maybe with a button. The arms of the welder close. The copper electrodes press down hard on the metal sheets. They squeeze them together. This pressure is really important. It makes sure the two metal pieces are in tight contact. Good contact means the electricity can flow easily between them. It also helps to forge the metal together when it gets hot. So first the squeeze, a good firm press. No wiggle room allowed here for the metal. Then, for a very short time, the electricity flows. We're talking fractions of a second. A huge amount of electrical current zips through the copper electrodes. It goes into the top metal sheet. It tries to jump to the bottom metal sheet, but the metal resists this flow, especially where the two sheets are touching. This resistance creates intense heat right at that spot. The metal in that tiny area melts. It forms a little pool of molten metal between the two sheets. This is the weld nugget forming. You might see a quick bright flash and maybe a few sparks. And just as quickly as it started, the electricity stops. But the electrodes keep squeezing. They hold the metal pieces together while that molten nugget cools down. This cooling happens very fast too. The molten metal solidifies. It becomes one solid piece joining the two sheets. Then the electrodes open up, the arms release. And there you have it, a spot weld. A small, round, super strong connection. You can then move the metal and make another spot weld. And another. It's a cycle position, squeeze, zap, hold, release. Simple, effective, and pretty darn cool. Section 6. Why it sticks so good. The awesome advantages of spot welding. So, why do people love spot welding so much? Well, it's got a lot of good things going for it. One of the biggest advantages is speed. It's incredibly fast. Squeeze, zap, done. You can make a spot weld in a tiny fraction of a second. This is amazing for making lots of things quickly. Think about a car factory. They need to make thousands of welds on every car. If each weld took a long time, cars would be way too expensive. Spot welding keeps things moving fast. Time is money, as they say. And spot welding saves a lot of time. Another big plus is that it's pretty clean. Compared to some other welding methods, there's not a lot of smoke. There are no filler materials like welding rods that you have to add. The weld is made just from the metal sheets themselves. This means less mess to clean up afterwards. 
and generally the area around the weld doesn't get super hot, the heat is very focused, right on that little spot. So, the metal pieces don't warp or bend as much. This is a big deal when you need parts to fit together perfectly. Spot welding is also great for automation. That means robots can do it. You can program a robot to make hundreds, even thousands of spot welds, exactly the same way, every single time. This is huge for big factories. Robots don't get tired, they don't need brakes, they can work 24-7. This makes the process very consistent, and consistency means quality. You know each weld will be strong, this has changed how we make many things. From cars to washing machines, it's all thanks to these tireless robot welders. Finally, it's often cheaper. The machines can be an investment, sure, but because it's fast, uses no filler materials, and can be automated, the cost per weld is very low. This helps keep the price of products down, so you get strong, reliable connections without breaking the bank. It's an efficient use of energy and materials. For joining thin sheets of metal, especially steel, it's often the best choice. It's strong, it's fast, it's clean, and it's cost-effective. What's not to like about that? It really is a clever way to stick things together. Section 7. Tiny Welds. Big Impact Spot Welding in Your Everyday Life. You might be surprised where you find spot welding, it's like a secret agent, working hard behind the scenes. Take your car for example. A modern car body has thousands of spot welds. Thousands. They hold the frame together, they attach the door panels, they secure the roof. All those little dimples you might see if you look closely at the metal edges, many of those are spot welds. They make your car strong and safe, so next time you're driving, give a little nod to the humble spot weld. It's doing a big job, but it's not just cars. Look around your kitchen your washing machine, your dryer, your refrigerator, even your microwave oven. Chances are, their metal parts are held together by spot welds. Think about the drum inside your washing machine. It spins around really fast with wet, heavy clothes. It needs to be strong. Spot welds help make it that way. Or the metal shelves in your oven. They get hot, they hold heavy dishes. Spot welds keep them secure. It's all about making everyday items durable and reliable for you. Let's go smaller. Even some electronics use spot welding. Tiny batteries in your gadgets? The metal tabs on them are often spot welded. It's a precise way to make a good electrical connection without too much heat. Heat can damage delicate electronic parts. So, the quick, focused heat of spot welding is perfect. It's also used in making metal furniture, like filing cabinets or metal desks. Those sturdy drawers and panels? Yep, often spot welded. It's a versatile technique that finds its way into many different products, big and small. And, it's not just for making new things, spot welding is also used in repair work. If a metal panel on a machine gets damaged, sometimes it can be repaired using spot welds. It's used in orthodontics too to make braces, those little metal brackets and wires. It's amazing how many places this simple technique pops up, from massive car factories to tiny medical devices. Spot welding is truly an unsung hero. It's quietly holding our world together, one strong little spot at a time. You probably used something today that was spot welded and you didn't even know it. Section 8, not always a perfect spark, watching out for little troubles. Now, spot welding is great, but like any job, things can sometimes go a little sideways. It's not always a perfect spark every single time. One common issue is a weak weld. The spot weld might not be strong enough, this can happen if the metal wasn't clean, or if the electrodes were dirty or worn out. Remember those copper tips? They need to be in good shape. If they are too flat or have gunk on them, they can't deliver the pressure and current properly, so a weak weld might form, and that's no good for anyone. Another thing to watch for is electrode sticking. Sometimes the copper electrode tip can stick to the metal sheet after the weld. This is annoying, it can damage the surface of the metal. It can also damage the electrode tip itself. This often happens if the welding current is too high, or if the electrode pressure is too low. It's a bit of a balancing act. You need enough current to melt the metal, but not so much that it causes other problems. Keeping those electrodes clean and properly dressed, meaning shaped, helps prevent sticking too. Sometimes you might get too much spark or what we call expulsion. This is when molten metal squirts out from between the sheets during the weld. It looks a bit dramatic, but it usually means something is off. Maybe the pressure is too low, or the current is too high for too long, or the metal fit up isn't great. This can make the weld weaker because you're losing some of that nugget material. It also makes a bit of a mess. So, if you see lots of sparks flying, it's a sign to check your settings and your setup carefully. Safety is always a concern too. 
We talked about safety gear, but you also need to be aware of the machine. Make sure it's properly maintained. Check the electrical connections, be careful with the moving parts, those clamping arms, and always be aware of the heat. Even after the weld is done, the metal can stay hot for a while. So, it's not just about making the weld, it's about understanding the whole process. Knowing what can go wrong helps you make sure it goes right. A little care goes a long way in any workshop. Section 9. The Unsung Hero's Legacy. Why spot welding is still a big deal. So, there you have it. Spot welding. It might not be glamorous. It doesn't involve huge flames or dramatic showers of sparks like some other welding. But it's a true workhorse. A real unsung hero in the world of making things. It's been around for a long time. Over a hundred years. And it's still incredibly important. Why? Because it's simple, effective, and efficient. It does its job of sticking metal together really, really well. And it does it fast without a lot of fuss or extra materials. Think about all the things we've talked about. Cars, appliances, electronics, furniture. All these things rely on strong, dependable connections. Spot welding provides those connections. Millions and millions of them, every single day, all around the world. It's a foundational technology. It allows us to build complex things from simple sheets of metal. It's a key part of modern manufacturing. Without it, many of the products we take for granted would be much harder to make, or much more expensive, or they just wouldn't be as good. The future of spot welding looks bright too. People are always finding ways to make it even better. New types of electrodes, better control systems for the machines, ways to weld new kinds of metals and alloys. As we keep innovating and looking for lighter, stronger materials, spot welding will continue to adapt. It's a technology that has proven its worth. It stood the test of time. Because at its heart, it's a really smart way to solve a common problem. How to join two pieces of metal together strongly and quickly. So, the next time you hop in your car or open your fridge or even just sit at a metal desk, take a moment. Think about those hidden welds, those tiny spots of fused metal. They are a testament to human ingenuity. A simple process doing a vital job, spot welding might be an unsung hero but its legacy is all around us and the strong, reliable products that make our lives easier and safer. It's a dirty job in a way, dealing with heat and metal. But the results? They are something we can all appreciate. It's a big deal.